stick around, help yourself. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mike Berman, General Manager of the Durables. Thanks, Scott. Did you say 82 days? Holy man. That got me nervous. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, very excited. This is a this is a very special day for us. Uh, you know, it's hard to imagine that this is only the fourth time we'll be announcing uh, or introducing a new manager in our 18 years of AAA baseball. Uh, you know, think about that for a second. There's, you know, most minor league teams, many minor league teams, you know, they're introducing their fourth manager in four seasons. Um, you know, what that says, uh, it says a lot about the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Um, and it says a lot about the coaching legacy uh, that we've enjoyed here in Durham. Um, you know, when I arrived here in Durham towards the end of the 1998 season, um, I, re I was coming from Class A, and I remember meeting Bill Evers for the first time. And Bill sat me down, um, told me that I'm, you know, I'm now in the big leagues, that you know, AAA this is going to be a big step up from from single A. Kind of set me straight right away. Um, and over the course of you know the next eight years. Um, we have been to six playoff, made six playoff appearances, uh, won two Governor's Cup championships, uh, and really became great friends. And I remember the day when you know Bill called me to tell me that you know he was going to head up to Tampa to be the bench coach for Joe Madden, and it was one of those you know bittersweet moments that you know a person who you grew so close to had so much success with, uh, and all of a sudden he was getting a chance to. Uh, pursue his dream of the heading up to Major League Baseball. And then all of a sudden, 2007 comes, you know, so you think, are, are you really ever going to have a manager that could replicate what Bill did? At that time, he became the winningest manager in Bulls history. Um, 2007 shows up and Charlie Montoya arrives. And, you know, you could tell right away that first season that something special was again happening here in Durham. Um, you know, and, and you think of the, the numbers that Bill put up, you know, Charlie, Charlie overtook him. You know, Bill was six playoff appearances in eight years. Charlie was seven playoff appearances in eight, eight years. Both won two Governor's Cup championships, and he you know, obviously won our only national championship with Charlie. Um, you know, it kind of was the same thing. You know, we'd get a call in, in December from Charlie. Um, I think he, every time I talk to him, he's still smiling and sounding like he's a little kid that, that you know, he's going to be heading to Tampa as a third base coach. Um, so today we get to introduce the next man who we hope will join the great legacy of Bulls managers. Uh, the best part about it is he played for both Charlie and Bill. Um, so he isn't a stranger to the Bulls uniform either uh, as he won two Governor's Cup championships here as a player under Bill Evers. Uh, the other thing with, you know, he joins Evers and Montoyo as coming up through the ranks of the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, he's managed at four different levels of the Tampa Bay Rays organization. And at that, at 36 years old, he becomes the youngest manager in AAA. So there is not a person better suited to take on this challenge. And we are honored to introduce the new manager of the Durham Bulls, Jared Sandberg. Oh, it's exciting. Um, exciting. Um, I know my uh, family's uh, watching back home, so hello, Evan, Claire, and Julie. Um, uh, they're really excited uh, as well for me. This is a great opportunity for me and my family uh, to be back in the, the Durham Bulls uniform, to be able to work my way up through the minor leagues as a, as a manager uh, and have the uh, and show the ability to do hard work and uh, dedication to the organization and put the time in and then eventually get back here to Durham is, uh, is, is pretty special. Uh, a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of great memories from when I played here. Um, um, probably too many to list, but uh, this is a great place to play. This is a, a great franchise. 
Um, there's a lot of history here, and, and I'm, I'm really excited uh, to be the uh, next manager. I follow in the footsteps of, like Mike said, uh, former managers of mine, Bill Evers and, and Charlie. Uh, great, great people. Didn't touch it. Yeah, you owe me something. <laughs> uh, I follow the footsteps of, of Bill and, and Charlie, and uh, great uh, people, great individuals, great mentors to me. Uh, throughout my career, they both manage me, and uh, I'm extreme, extremely excited to follow in their footsteps. Big shoes to fill with uh, the championships and the success that they've had over the course of the years, but uh, I'm willing to and, and ready to accept that challenge. Uh, even though I may be young, um, I, I still, I think I'm entering my 20th uh, professional season. I'm going to lean on a lot of my uh, past experience as a player and a manager. And, um, you know, getting to work with uh, the staff that we're going to have this year. And, uh, you know, Kyle Snyder and I are, are reunited. You know, we won a championship in the New York Penn League uh, to, to get back with him. I know he's excited to, uh, to be here in Durham, uh, North Carolina grad. Uh, get back to the uh, the triangle is, is exciting for him. I'm excited to work with him again. We had a lot of success together. Uh, I'm excited to work with the rest of the staff and, and uh, Mike Sandoval, the trainer, and uh, Dave Myers, and lean on Dave and his experience uh, as a minor league uh, coach and AAA manager and a big league coach. Uh, this, is a, this is a tremendous staff uh, to surround me with and a good supporting cast to allow us in, in Durham to have success. Uh, Again, I'm uh, honored to follow in the footsteps of the, the great managers, and, and it's a privilege to to uh, lead the, the Durham Bulls uh, in the storied franchise uh, throughout the rest of this season. All right, guys, if you have any questions, now fire away for Jared. I got a question. How do you uh, work this microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you. I'll get you. Out <laughs> Who's first? Hey, Joe, you said you had a lot of fond memories of. Playing in Durham. On top of your head, what's the one thing you remember the most? When you back? Yeah, looking back, there's parts of five years. So, um, you know, I, I think, um, you, know, my, you know, Mike was here, uh, you know, Colin, the uh, clubhouse manager, was here, uh, and just a few other people were here. Uh, but there were just great people that worked with uh, within the Durham Bulls organization. Uh, the, the, the fans, the, the fan support. Uh, was tremendous. Uh, my wife and I talked about, you know, maybe making a home here in Durham uh, at some point. It was a great place to live and 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 be, and a great place to play. I had um, tremendous teammates here. I always think back to um, the the times in the clubhouse, uh, on the bus trips, uh, airplane rides, early mornings, uh, the the success we had on the field, but the great teammates that I had, uh, you know, most that I keep still keep in touch with now. And uh, those those are great memories uh, of five years that that I'll I'll never forget. You know, I came here as I came here as a uh, you know young prospect. I came here. Uh, I was here as a 40-man player, a non-roster player. I got passed up. Other players went up to the major league ahead of me, um, and and many other uh, situations that are going to allow me to relate to the players. But you know, all, all those times here. Um, were, uh, were were great memories and, and things that I've leaned on through my coaching career now and be able to uh, pass on to the players that I've managed. Do you have a question about um, Port Charlotte? I know this level is obviously closer to the major, but you were geographically much closer to the home base when you were down there near Tampa Bay. Um, when, while you were down there in Port Charlotte, did you have regular interactions with the guys down there? And how much of what Tampa Bay is doing, which is pretty far out of the box, some of it was sort of passed on to you as things that they'd like you to think about, work on, even deploy on the field? Well, I could talk on this uh, topic for a uh, <laughs> long-winded answer. Um, so yeah, being in Port Charlotte, being at the spring training complex was was, was great. Uh, you're around um, you know, a lot uh, more of the organization as far as uh, the interaction from the front office staff that comes down to visit and watch um, you know, the Stonecraft play or watch the Gulf Coast League or extended spring training. Um, there's a lot more personnel and people that are around there. Uh, the other thing too is you know, we were able to get some some rehab players that, that come mm -hmm. that came through there. Whereas I didn't get that interaction with the older players uh, through rehab process in 
you know, my previous stops in Princeton or Hudson Valley or Bowling Green. So to be able to, you know, unfortunately there were some injuries last year in the big league, so I was able, they were able to come through there and uh, have some interaction with uh, some, some big league players, uh, which was great uh, learning experience for me in communicating to the older players, the veteran players, the guys that have more experience. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely lean on that experience as well. And, and as far as them, you know, the, the ideas and implementing the, you know, the raise way, I mean, I've been in the raise organization for parts of what, 17 years now or something like that. So um, I was a former devil ray and, and now a ray. So I, I grew up as a way, I know the raise way, I know how it's um, the uh, image and, and everything's kind of changed for the better, uh, significantly better. And you know, I think demographically it doesn't really matter. It's always going to be the raised way, whether it's a hot rod jersey or a stone crab or a bulls jersey. So it's going to be the raised way no matter what. What do you think the biggest challenges are as far as dealing with players? The slum, we have a lot of guys who are thrilled to be here and some guys who are not thrilled to be here. What's the, what's the key to kind of that mesh? Um, I mean, it's going to be a challenge. I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, the list goes on as far as what the challenge is. You listed list a few. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to leaning on my experience. And it's something I mentioned before, you know, a, a prospect, a 40-man player, non-40-man, a six-year free agent. Uh, I was even married uh, while here in, in, in the offseason before I came to Durham. So, um, you know, having my wife, Julie, around uh, during the season, uh, I was injured. You know, all, all those things. I'll be able to lean on a lot of those experiences to be able to communicate to the player. But it, it comes down to building those relationships, uh, being up front with the players, uh, letting them know what they need to work on, um, and then executing that plan, uh, getting the feedback from the big league staff as far as uh, what the players need to work on and, and, and how we can get those players back to the big leagues or get them to the big leagues for the first time. And it's kind of an exciting time uh, in, in the Rays organization with all the trades and everything. So there's going to be a lot of new players. Um, and that would be a difference too from the last couple of years. A lot of familiarity with the rosters that I had the last couple of years. The the championship team we had in 2012, those prospects moved up with me uh, throughout the minor leagues. So I'm looking forward to them kind of catching me now as I've uh, passed them up in the uh, in the ranks. Um, but yeah, the, there's going to be some unfamiliarity with some of the roster players. So I need to get to uh, know them, and that's going to be through communication dialogue. Joe, you touched on just now the trades in the, in the organization and really a, a major retool at the big league level. How will that affect, or how do you know how that will affect you from what the, the big league has told you your marching orders are? Um, I, I, you know, we're uh, just a couple of days into this announcement, so uh, I'm still kind of putting some of the pieces together and um, you know, all that stuff will be laid out. I'll be going to my first big league camp as a coach, so I'm excited about that. Um, you know, getting uh, getting to know Kevin and the rest of the league staff a little bit better. Um, but yeah, all those orders will uh, will come down in, in due time. We have you know some time to figure this thing out. But I'm, I'm excited. I mean, the, the changes that have, have taken place they're they're exciting for the organization. Uh, they're exciting for uh, the players in the organization. Um, uh, it's gonna I, think, I mean it's gonna be great. Uh, everybody is you know is talking about it's full speed ahead from here on out and. We haven't really missed a beat this offseason. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel a little pressure to, I mean, this, this is not just any uh, organization, it, it's the Durham Bulls. Okay. Um, pressure, sure, um, but no, not really. Um, you know, the, the players play, the coaches, we, we coach. Um, there's, on every any given night, you can have any, any roster out there. There's a lot of big league needs that are going to, uh, you know, take away or, or give to the Durham Bulls roster. So um, it, it is what it is. Uh, I do know that uh, we're going to go out there and compete every single night to try and win the game. Hey, uh, Jared. Um, so when in uh, your big league career, uh, did you kind of know you wanted to manage afterwards? And uh, what kind of brought you to that decision? Well, I'm still 36, so I wish I was still playing. <laughs> but uh, and it goes back to the high school when I was, you know, playing high school shortstop for uh, Capitol High School and, and uh, in Olympia, Washington, and and you know, being one of the leaders on that on that uh, high school team. And you know, my former high school coach used to say that it was like having an extra coach on the field, having Jared play shortstop. So knowing that I had those qualities, and, you know, whatever my 
whenever my um, playing career was going to end, uh, I definitely wanted to get into coaching, and I was fortunate that the Rays uh, were able to create a, a coaching position and able to get me back in as a former player. And, um, yeah, I've enjoyed uh, the last couple of years, uh, six, seven years as a, as a coach, and there's a, there's a lot of ways to give back, a lot of advice that uh, I've gotten from my mentors. Uh, and, and not everybody's going to make it to the major leagues, but you know, here we are knocking on the door. We're at AAA, so a good opportunity for these players to get to the big leagues or get back to the big leagues. But not everybody makes it to the big leagues. So our job in the lower minor leagues is to, yes, develop baseball talent and get them uh, big league ready, but also be able to make them good people. And there's a lot of good people in the Rays organization that helped create the person that I am today. Uh, back when I was drafted in 1996, um, their father figures, their their mentors, and they've, they've really helped mold me into the person I am today. Um, you know, that's what that's what coaching is all about. So I think, you know, when did I know? Uh, I think I knew probably at an early age. And my, my dad's been coaching for 30 years now. Um, it's kind of in our blood, you know, obviously with, with Ryan being the, the manager of the Phillies. Uh, it, it is in the, uh, the Sanford Club. Derek, do you, now that you've been at this job for a, a number of years and, you know, you've got the tools of the trade down and how to show up and do the job every day. Do you, have you also developed a style that you would say is unique to you and, and what is it? Um, I definitely, I mean, I'm definitely, I wouldn't say laid back, I'm very competitive, but I'm also very patient. Uh, I know that mistakes are going to be made on the baseball field. Um, so being at the lower levels, I knew I had to have patience. Uh, I promoted mistakes so the players could learn uh, from their mistakes. Um, now, obviously, we get to a higher level. Uh, more mistakes that are made at AAA is going to hinder the process of getting to the big league. So, um, but baseball is very, very difficult to play. It's about being consistent. Uh, it is about showing up ready to play every single day. Um, I can be fiery at times, but uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty even keel. Uh, kind of don't try and get too high. Don't try and get too uh, too low or too down. Uh, that's just kind of the, the flow of the mentality you have to have in this uh, game of baseball. Jared Charlie played a lot of players, and he always said the reason he did is because he was a player. Will that uh, be your philosophy? I think uh, playing the entire roster is very, very important. It uh, helps with uh, continuity uh, in the clubhouse, but on the field, it keeps everybody fresh. Uh, if that 25th guy on the roster um, you know, doesn't play all that often and just getting a, a limited number of bats, it's not going to keep him fresh when, you know, knowing that players get called up to the big leagues and there's injuries and you can keep everybody fresh and, and, and keep them game ready. Uh, when they do step in, they're going to be able to step up. Um, you know, a story that I've heard over the last couple of days is uh, uh, I spent uh, the weekend with Stephen Vogt and Craig Albernaz and, and Albie talked about, you know, that and, uh, and, you know, Craig wasn't always on the roster, but you know, one of his biggest moments is hitting a home run off a grand slam off the bowl on a first pitch after coming off, uh, you know, not being on the roster. So uh, it's very important to get everybody involved, uh, especially knowing the, the uh, flexibility of the roster and not knowing who's with you day to day. Ryan, I'd be interested to hear what Uncle Ryan has had to say since his latest announcement about your career. Yeah, I, I spoke to Ryan uh, on the phone and he was, he was very excited uh, for me and the promotion and um, excited, for, you know, for me to, to continue to move up uh, the coaching ranks and and uh, be able to come back to Durham uh, where I where I played. Any more questions, guys? Yeah, uh, Jordan, you have played all levels of minor league, and you've had coaches and managers at those those various levels. What do you see now as your biggest change in that A ball now? Triple A. The one thing that you say will you have to face. Um, you know, it's the, it's the it's the players that you know, are trying to get to the big leagues, and, and uh, I don't know if dealing with, but you know, definitely communicating with them on uh, on a daily basis on, on how or what they need to do to, to get back or help them put up the numbers that that uh, they need to put up to get to the big leagues. Uh, and, and the numbers are very important, but also um, being able to, you know, put their individual numbers aside so they can play for the team and uh, continue the tradition of being a championship uh, organization during Bulls. 
We got time for one more if anybody wants to fire the last. We have plenty of time. Plenty of time. He's here all day, right? Yeah. Well, do you have any like, specific memories of anything that happened here when you were here? I know you said you had a lot of memories. Is there anything that really stands out? Or yeah, I mean, I mean, coming out here and playing third base, uh, uh, hitting the ball off the wall, and um, you know, hitting the ball. I think I think I only hit one home run off the uh, off the ball in left field. Um, uh, did you get the save? I am, I'm sure I did, yeah. <laughs> if not, I'm sure I'll try and redeem that at some point. Um, but uh, you know, the, the teammates that I had, uh, the fan interaction, I tried to really uh, interact with the fans. Uh, there were there were great fans here, and they were they showed uh, tremendous support uh, through my playing career, and, and now since being named manager, um, you know, I, I wasn't here for some of those some of the championship runs because I got called up late in the season to go to the big leagues, but. Definitely a part of a uh, bulk of the season for uh, for some of those years. Um, I do know that my last at bat in a Bulls uniform was uh, during that that uh, Buffalo series. We were up in Buffalo in 2004 when we uh, when we lost the series. But my my last at bat, I ended up getting ejected. So my uh, I struck out on I think it was three pitches right down the middle, and I argued balls and strikes and got tossed, and that was my my last uh, time in a Bulls uniform. Uh, uh, which is which is pretty funny, but I, I mean, parts parts of five years. There's 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 a, there's a ton of memories from you know playing with uh, you know BJ Upton when, when he came up here as a 19 or 20 year old and he's hitting balls all over this ballpark and you know hitting home runs into the uh, blue seats and right and we were all shocked like how does a 20 year old you know is he is he able to hit the ball that far the other way? Um, uh, but again, I'll, you know, it's been all those years with Bill Evers and. You know, he's, he's a mentor for me and uh, still in the race organization. Uh, the, I mean, there's, I guess there's times I can go on all day. Jared, uh, you were talking before about um, having managed some of the guys at the lower levels who are not going to catch up with you now yeah. that you're here. N not to ask you to play favorites, but there are particular guys from the lower levels that you manage. You, you're curious to see their development now and particularly excited about working with them again at the AAA. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of talent uh, in the organization. Yeah. A, a lot of that, uh, the prospects and the talent are, uh, will definitely come through here. Because they're uh, they're on their way, whether it's position players or pitchers. Um, uh, I have a lot of favorites, you know, I, I, and it's it's easy for me to, to to pull the favorites from the 2012, mm -hmm. uh, you know, season where we won a championship, really came together and uh, set some records in the New York Penn League. So I'm looking for, uh, looking forward to you know most of those guys that are still around to be able to you know work their way and get back up here. Uh, but without yeah singling anybody out, there's uh, there's a lot of talent down there there that I'm looking forward to uh, reconnecting with. And, have them get up here and put a full uniform on. Good. Awesome. All right, guys, that will do it. Jared will be around for a little bit, but uh, if you guys want to grab some refreshments, thank you all for coming. Like I said, we'll see you in, uh, in 82 days for opening day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not much has changed, huh? Sorry, man. That's the last time.